بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله As many of us are recounting and reading the stories of the Isra and the Mi'raj of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, there's just one reflection that I wanted to share with everyone. And that reflection is how the Isra and the Mi'raj, in particular the Mi'raj, the ascension of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi from Jerusalem into the heavens, caused Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to experience the greatest experience in his life. In reality, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Ala Ali's ascension into the heavens was a great source of mercy and blessings for the life of Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salaam. And how could it not be? Our Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salaam is a source of mercy to everyone and everything. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala tells us about our Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salaam that verily, I have sent you, O Muhammad, as a mercy to all universes meaning everything that's been created. And the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Ala Ali on this journey gets Moses Alayhi Salaam to finally, to finally fulfill something that he was seeking his whole life. What is that thing we're going to discuss today, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. But before we start, we have to understand who Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salaam was, his special relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. All Prophets were special. But some prophets had even more special characteristics than others. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was one of those individuals that was very, very special amongst the prophets. And he alayhi salam had a very unique relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that you would say he could get away with things that no other prophet would ever dare to even try. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about him in the Quran al-Kareem, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا Musa, Musa سَبْعَ Excuse me, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا Musa تِسْعَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ That verily I have given Moses alayhi salam nine clear signs. The ulama, they differ about what those signs were and what those signs are, but we know of some of them without a doubt. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had a staff, and when he would throw that staff, it would turn into a large serpent. And he alayhi salam, one of his signs were that when he would put his right hand into his side, it would come out glowing. And he alayhi salam, he split a sea. These are not little signs. These are major, major things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. But not that, just that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when speaking about Sayyidina Musa, وَاسْطَنَعَتُكَ لِنَفْسِي اِسْطَنَعَ يَسْطَنِعُ اِسْطِنَاعًا is the Arabic word, which means I have chosen you, O Moses, for myself. How? In that he made him a prophet and he put upon him divine love. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had the ability to be drawn close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that no other prophet was drawn to. For example, Harun alayhi salam, the brother of Sayyidina Musa. He became a prophet how? Because Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam asked Allah to make him a prophet. I mean, can you imagine this? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I stutter my tongue. Uh, stutters. So, فَأَرْسِلْ إِلَى هَارُونَ <laughs> Give revelation to Harun, alayhi salam. It's an amazing thing to ask. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that to Sayyidina Musa, alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us also about Sayyidina Musa, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke directly to Moses, alayhi salam. That's an honor beyond honors that we could ever imagine. Now, if you're Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and you're able to receive the speech of the divine, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Maybe you're going to ask for something else. And Sayyidina Musa did ask. He asked for the greatest pleasure that any creation could ever have. And that was the pleasure of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about this story 
or Sayyidina Musa, وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِيقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ قَالَ رَبِّي أَرِنِي أَنْظُرَ إِلَيْكَ قَالَ لَنْ تَرَانِي وَلَكِنْ أُنْظُرْ إِلَى الْجَبَلِ فَإِنْ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءً وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِقًا فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints for us the scene in which Moses alayhi salam, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be granted the divine vision of Allah. And what happens? When Moses came at the appointed time and his Lord spoke to him, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا He, Moses, asked, my Lord, reveal yourself to me so I may see you. The greatest pleasure that any creation can ever have is to see Allah. And Sayyidina Musa السلام, being a muhib, a lover of Allah, being a prophet of Allah, being able to speak with Allah, he wanted to see Allah. And Allah says, No, innaka len tarani. You cannot. It will not happen. Walakin. But look to this mountain. If if it remains firm in its place, only then will you see me. When his Lord appeared to the mountain, the mountain turned into dust. And Sayyidina Musa السلام, collapses unconscious. And then he wakes up, he recovers, and he says, Glory be to you. I turn to you in repentance. I am the first of the believers. A mountain rent into complete dust when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the ulama say, he just manifested a sliver of his nur, of his light to that mountain. And that mountain could not handle it. And it was completely leveled. And Shaykh Ahmed ibn Ajiba, radiallahu anhu arda, he says that there's a narration that when Musa alayhi salam became conscious, he was told that you asked for something that's not for you. You asked for something that's for an orphan that will come after you. Meaning our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi. And so our Prophet now, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, so many years later, he goes on the Isra, he goes on the night journey from Mecca al-Mukarramah to Jerusalem, and then he's taken on the Mi'raj. He's ascending through the heavens. And as he ascends through the heavens, he goes through the sixth heaven, and in the sixth heaven, that's where he meets Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. But he continues from there to the seventh heaven. And in the seventh heaven, he meets Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then from there, he goes to a Sidra al-Muntaha. He goes to a place in which not even Jibreel alayhi salam can cross. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala ali enters into this area, if we can even call it that, and a cloud overtakes him and he is exposed to the greatness of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's exposed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that we cannot comprehend and ways that we don't know, but ways that he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala ali experienced. And it was there that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala ali the 50 prayers. And after he has that experience, that encounter with the divine, our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi starts to return from the seventh heaven now, going to the sixth. And who's in the sixth? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Now I want to interject and just say something here. You know, if you've ever had a friend who's gone to Mecca al-Mukarramah and Medina al munawwarah someone who's visited the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, and someone who has made the Umrah in Mecca al-Mukarramah, usually when they come back from that experience from these two holy sanctuaries, they don't look the same. 
they don't feel the same. There's something special that's imprinted upon their spirits and imprinted upon their faces. I think we've all experienced this. Even ourselves, if we've gone, we know that when we come back, we feel light and we feel different. And usually when I see one of my friends, I give them a big hug and I don't want to let go. Why? Because they were in the two holiest sanctuaries on this earth. All of the blessings of Al-Haramayn Al-Sharifayn are upon them. The air that they breathe in Al-Haramayn Al-Sharifayn is in their system. What their eyes look at is imprinted upon their being. They become special. They become transformed. And many of us see that within them. And this is only when they're going to visit Mecca Al-Mukarramah and Medina Al-Munawwara, places that are still at the end of the day creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, can you imagine what would happen if one was in the presence of the divine? What sort of imprint would be upon them? What would it be like to interact with someone who was just in the presence of the king of all kings? And Sayyidina Musa السلام, was about to have that experience when he meets with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala ali. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala ali is passing and Sayyidina Musa sees him and looks at him. What was Sayyidina Musa seeing imprinted upon the Prophet والسلام? The Prophet just had this experience with the Divine. Sayyidina Musa wanted to see the Divine in the world, and Allah tells him, you will not see me. But here is the Prophet, who, experiencing Allah, doesn't become rent asunder like a mountain. He only grows in spiritual strength. He only grows being filled through that proximity to Allah. And now Sayyidina Musa, is at the closest place he could ever imagine to seeing Allah, seeing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi, who was just drawn close to Allah. You can imagine the heart of Sayyidina Musa. This is the one, this is the orphan that I was told would see my Lord. And so he's staring at the Prophet والسلام, and he asked him, He strikes up a conversation because remember when the Prophet passes by the seventh heaven, heaven, Sayyidina Ibrahim's there. Sayyidina Ibrahim doesn't say anything. He comes to the sixth heaven back. He's returning. Sayyidina Musa says something. What did your Lord do with you? Why? Because he wants to be in the presence of the one who is in the presence of the divine. 50 prayers? No, no, no. Go back. Go back. It's too hard for your community. Yes, through Sayyidina Musa السلام, we received that ease of prayers coming down from 50. But Sayyidina Musa السلام, as some of our spiritual saintly scholars said, he wanted something as well. He wanted more of what he was seeing imprinted in this beautiful Muhammadan السلام, reality. So he wanted the Prophet السلام, to go back to be in the presence of the divine because Sayyidina Musa knew it wasn't for him. So every time the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi went past Sidratul Muntaha and came back, Sayyidina Musa saw something new imprinted upon the Muhammadan alayhi salam essence and being. Go back. I want more. I want more. I want more. Go back. And so our prayers were being decreased. But the vision that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had of the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the persona of our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi was increasing. And so finally, he got his dream. He saw the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the personality and the being of Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi. So the mi'raj of our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi was a rahmah to the, all of creation. But in this particular instance, it was a major rahmah to Sayyidina Musa 
عليه السلام الله we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya rabbi ya kareem allows us to appreciate the beautiful nuances of these spiritual realities that he's put in the life of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi amin ya rabbi ya kareem